Welcome back to Houston Life. It is no secret that Houston's food scene is off the chain. And today we are getting to know one of the forces behind the popular concept, the Warwick. Yeah, if you love gumbo, oysters, and check, southern check, cuisine, check. you will want to <laughs> add the Warwick to your list. Rob Wright is the co-owner and culinary director. He joins us now in studio. Rob, welcome to Houston Life. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I know we're talking about the Warwick today. Y'all opened in spring of 2022. I That's can't correct. believe it's almost been two years. Two years. Wow. Yeah. You also have Rock House on Richmond. <laughs> near Fountain View. Uh, if you go out to Chapman and Kirby on Sundays, you've probably seen this guy. <laughs> you have such a fascinating life and career. I didn't realize, though, you worked in insurance for 15 years. Yeah, it was my first job out of college. I'm a, I'm a uh, former Coug, and my first job out of college was State Farm. Spent 15 years on the catastrophe team. So I had an opportunity to travel all over the country and actually learn and experience a lot of different culinary inspirations that actually spawn some of the stuff we actually do at the Warwick. So we we were, I was literally living out of suitcase coast to coast all over the place. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated because you're very successful in the mm -hmm. insurance business. Mm -hmm. And anyone, I mean, I like to watch the show like Bar Rescue. Mm -hmm. Opening one restaurant is mm -hmm. challenging. And people, right. throw, they go all in and they're not really sure of how to make it successful. And sure. you've been successful in this. What made you think, hey, I can do this. I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to really do this. A lot of it started, I tell folks all the time when I mentor a lot of younger younger folks, is first, you know, the having that corporate background, learning be, professionalism is key to any any concept or any type of bit, field of business that you're in. And so each and every one of the concepts we own, we set standards. And we tell, we tell our, our folks, the standard is a standard. Standard. You know, if, even if it's just a party, or if it's a restaurant, if it's a sports bar, there still have to be standards that have to be met that our customers want to experience. That's a really good point. And also, yeah. you're dealing with people in most mm -hmm. every business out mm -hmm. there, right? Sure. You're originally from Michigan, is that true? Detroit. <laughs> what were you like in school, and what were your dreams when you were in high school and college? Funny you mention that. I was a big athlete, track and football guy. I thought I was going to go play college football somewhere. Look at this guy right there. Oh, a little look skinny at you. back there. I mean, <laughs> climb fours out there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And unfortunately, I had a really bad neck injury my senior year, so I had to kind of let the sports go, so I had to focus on school. And one of the things my parents instilled was like, look, you need to finish school. You need to finish school. And that was, you know, my main focus, finishing school, getting a good job. Did that, checked that box. And, you know, after 15 years of working, you know, in corporate America, you know, the entrepreneurial juices started flowing, and the rest is history. Yeah. What were the biggest, I like to, you know, you're doing successful things now, but mm -hmm. what was a big, um, I guess, I, I guess, um, like an obstacle. Yeah. Or what, what obstacle or hurdle did you have to overcome in order to be here? Good question. Um, really, you know, the, <laughs> the first bar we opened, we, we took, we took a lot. We took an L. We spent seven years. It was Sugar Hill Lounge. No one really showed us what to do. No one told us how to do it. We just kind of grabbed ourselves by the bootstraps and jumped in it. Uh, we learned a lot, a lot of good stuff, a lot of bad stuff. And then that experience actually took us to Prospect Park that we opened in 2007. And we've been open for nine years. So all the, the bumps in the road we experienced with the first concept prepared us for Prospect Park and everything that we have going on right now. And it, it really is incredible at all your locations. The crowds come out. The crowds <laughs> come out. And in fact, your spot, we mentioned Rock House uh -huh. on Richmond. This sure. is the old Billy Blues location, well, Billy Blues right? used to be formerly the Horn. It's been a few different things, but they all had live music genres and, and motifs going on. So we pretty much picked that ball up and carried that same idea with live music. So we do live music three nights a week. We just started our fabulous live music Sunday brunch that has taken off immensely in the last two weeks. Sunday brunch and live music? Oh my yeah, God, it's I so love good. that. It's so good. Hey, you're a big family man. I mean, yep. you're a family, mm -hmm. your mom drops off this carrot cake <laughs> to the Warwick every day. I mean, no one else, it's like hands off. That's mom's dessert. She won't even um, give me the recipe. <laughs> yeah, how, how is that? How were you raised at, to keep it like that and keep family so involved? Um, again, one of my inspirations for being in hospitality was my mom, watching her cook all these fabulous dishes and my uncle's cooking. And my mom's from Florida, my dad's from South Carolina. And again, we kind of grew up my early years in Detroit. So we, you know, I saw a lot of different culinary things going on. And my mom's carrot cake, hands down, at all the family gatherings, friend gatherings, holidays, so forth, the carrot cake never stays. It's gone like that. And needless to say, it's our top selling uh, dessert. Top selling dessert. Wow. And your mom is making it every day. By the mm -hmm. way, shout out to mom. She is a <laughs> breast cancer, cancer survivor. She is. Wow. She is. Uh, she I is. know you lost your sister as well. To I did. Disease. I did. Yeah. So uh, she has three kids. We have two of them that are 
One's graduated, he's an Aggie. We have another one's graduating from Prairie View. We have one more to go, and she's going to Prairie View as well next year, so. Your family wow. is so beautiful. And you. I know you have seen so much success here in Houston, mm -hmm. and you have made a commitment to give back to the community. In fact, we were chatting during commercial break. You're involved with the American Cancer Society mm -hmm. every single year, and you spend a lot of your time giving back to causes that are near and dear to your heart. Sure, and as you know, we discussed early offline, you know, the Shuck Cancer event that's happened, happened in Houston the last two years. It's grown immensely. Um, proud sponsor to be involved with it and anything we can do as it relates. As a matter of fact, when I leave here, I'm headed out to Cypress Falls High School. We're donating some food for their Black History Month program. Fantastic. So we're all about it. Wow. Well, in the community, maybe maybe born in Detroit, but by the grace of God, you're here in <laughs> yep. Houston, Texas, no doubt, and no uh, we can't wait to taste some of this deliciousness oh, going on. Man, but, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, but your story, really, that's what feeds the soul first, thank so you. thank you so much for that. It yeah. sure does. We're glad to have you here in Houston, Rob. Sure, and, thanks uh, so much. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but after that break, Rob will teach us how to make one of their new menu items. This is a jerk Chilean <laughs> sea bass, Tessa. Fancy. Okay, and he's right. Uh, you think he didn't bring us a slice of Mama's carrot cake? Oh, the carrot Come cake on. Here. It's time for lunch and dessert when Houston Life returns. That looks so delicious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome back to Houston Life. The Warwick on Westheimer is known for its delicious southern cuisine, moody atmosphere, and Mama Wright's carrot cake. I cannot wait to try that carrot cake. Co-owner and culinary director Rob Wright is back along with Chef Jabril Riddick from the restaurant. And uh, we are going to have dessert at some point. But first, today, y'all are cooking up a Chilean sea bass. Is that right? Yes, you're actually correct. That's a jerk sea bass. Uh, we kind of want to take the Caribbean flair and bring it to the Warwick. Uh, but also it's taste true to our southern with the uh, collard green puree and a potato croquette. Oh okay. my gosh, that sounds fancy. Chef, Chef Jabril, we talked to um, we talked to Mr. Wright here, and he was talking about the standard that you have in all these restaurants. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to work in that atmosphere? Yeah, with right. that standard. The standard is really important. I mean, it, it all comes down to consistency, making mm -hmm. sure that uh, the food tastes the same no matter what day it is. Um, and just making sure that uh, the quality of the ingredients stays, in, stays, you know, stays part of the front before part of the uh, restaurant. Uh, making sure that we are talking to our vendors, making sure we're getting the quality fish, getting the quality proteins. And as long as you do those small things, uh, your restaurant will always be successful. The little things are important. Things I are important. always say that because yeah. it's the little things that add up and that m Details. makes the big things. Details. What are some of the most popular items on the menu? Of course our oranges are popular. <laughs> uh, the Death by Gumbo is a super, super big popular dish. Yeah. Our uh, Hawaiian ribeye is one of our top sellers. And I, I would say our number one seller right now is our uh, Snapper Appaloosas. Okay, any menu that has death by gumbo on it, <laughs> I'm, I, you have decided for me what I am going to order. That's oh amazing. Gosh, and look at these shrimp over here. <laughs> They're gigantic. They're gigantic from our golf. I mean, that's one thing our golf does well is those jumbo shrimp, but they look beautiful and everything smells mm -hmm. amazing as well. How do you prepare these? So we uh, marinate them overnight, and then we have a special breading mix that we make in-house deep fry them, then we toss them in a house-made chili glazed sauce. Oh my gosh, yeah. the chili Super glazed amazing. shrimp. <laughs> that is beautiful. And Rob, I mean, clearly Jabril knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in charge of coming up with the, the different menus for all your locations, is That's that right? right? Jabril, he's, he's, he's fascinating. He's a great guy to work with. We bounce a lot of different stuff off each other in our, in our travels. And one of the things about work that we kind of, I guess, that we hold, to our pride, the prideful about is, is you know, Houston's a, a big melting pot of diversity, okay? So our menu is comprised of the same thing. We have an Asian influence, Latin influence, Caribbean influence, Polynesian influence, and these are the key things that keep everyone coming to the world. And a little South Carolina and Florida. There you go. <laughs> All right, the Chilean uh, sea bass. All right, so Let's this is our it. Chilean sea bass. So we marinate our uh, sea bass overnight okay. in our house-made jerk marinade that we do. And my guys will bring it out, saute it, sear it in the pan like it is right now. Yum. I've already started cooking it already, so it's pretty much done. It's talking to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have it's our <laughs> and then we have our collard green puree. So we yep. kind of make like a uh, almost how they, how they do vinaigrette. We add oil slowly to it to kind of help emulsify it. Okay. Uh, but it has all the flavors of collard greens. You can taste the pork in there. I mean, well, the, the turkey in there. You can taste the collard greens, the onions, the bell pepper, and you just kind of slowly add the oil in there till just till it emulsifies and it becomes more almost like a pesto. Okay. Okay. And you put that's going to be the base. So we're going to put this? that base down right okay. here. I always put that as a base because I like something for our fish to sit on. 
this plating process too. I mean, if you want your, your food to look like a chef prepared it at home, this is a critical part of the process, <laughs> Of course, right? of course, of course. And then we have our potato croquette. So we basically take our truffle mashed potatoes, add a little bit of other spices to it, I can't really tell you. Oh, and we bread it. Yeah. Okay, okay. We bread it and we deep fry that. Yum. And we sit that right down in there. Okay. And then, you know, just to top it off, you hit it with the amazing jerk sea bass here. Oh, it smells so good. And that looks beautiful already. Mm -hmm. So you leave the, the skin on there, huh? No skin. No skin. No skin. No, that's, that's the marinade. Just the marinade. That's the marinade, so wow. it gives it that gotcha. nice jerk color. So we start it on the grill, bring it to the saute pan, finish it in the oven, and then we sell it. Okay. And just to add a little bit of color, we'll, add, we'll mix our green onions with some carrots and a little bit of charred lime. Okay. There you go. Love it. Look at that. Well, may I? You Which one, or should I go carrot cake? What are we doing, Derek? Yeah, whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they say dessert always tastes better when you eat it first. Okay, well, but, I've got to try both. Let's go with the sea bass uh, first, fine. though. Fine. Wait, so tell us, Rob, a little bit more about the Sunday brunch, because I know that depending on the time of year, you have special events that change, and what's cool about the restaurant is mm -hmm. as the night goes on, you sort of go from dinner to like bar service, is that right? Yeah, so uh, again, Rock House, we have this, this fabulous southern, su southern Sunday brunch. We have carving stations, smoked oxtails, all your favorite breakfast dishes, dessert stations, um, bread stations. And like I said, we it's phenomenal. It's no stone unturned in terms of the presentation and so forth. And then again, with the live music component, it's great. So you come in from 11 to 4, have brunch at Rock House, and then you can head over to Chapman and Kirby for a little fun day Sunday. Well, I love what you guys are doing over there, not just because it's, um, you know, Houston and it's a mix. I like the story of how you didn't get it immediately right the first sure. time, but you went sure. back and now you've experienced all the success. So uh, continue to success to both of you. Thank you so much. Yeah. By the way, this carrot cake is delicious. Oh, you're eating the carrot cake with that? You see what he did? He made me go for the sea so bass, good. and then he said... <laughs> <laughs> that is delicious. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. We love it. Rob Wright, <laughs> Chef Jabril Riddick, thank you for stopping by. Appreciate it. I love thank you, you. See Mom. You at the Warwick. <laughs> by the way, more info is on our website, HoustonLife.tv. What do you think? Um, yes. Yes, please. Okay. okay.